Welcome to our Thursday morning Bible class. Our text comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses 8 and 9. Paul is in a bit of a listing mood in this part of our text. We are treated as imposters and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet make many rich, as have nothing, yet possess everything. Um, this idea at the beginning two weeks is we're treated as imposters and yet, and yet are true, that even though the world thinks they're imposters, that they know that they are true to the word of God, to Christ Jesus, to the message of him. And I was looking up something here today, and there's an article written that is very interesting to me. It said, the quote, the title of the article is, humans are hardwired to, to dismiss facts that don't fit with their worldview. Now, as a theologian, I wouldn't call it hardwired. I would call it, it's the effect of sin in our life, that, that sin corrupts our ability to know as well as to feel. Uh, we feel truth. And we know truth, but we also, by sin, can be uh, polluted by it, and it can go in all sorts of wrong directions. And so that idea that if we're, if the if the sinful world is hardwired in some way to to rage against truth, it doesn't surprise me that when Christ says He's the truth and that the Word of God is the truth, that a lot of the world rejects it, rages against it. Their their sinful nature just will not have it. Jesus does not fulfill the worldview, and that is important because once we understand this, we understand how to evangelize and to talk to people. Because for most people, theologically speaking, their worldview is this. If you're good, you'll go to heaven. Or, no matter what, you will die and just cease to be. Those are the two main worldviews. And Christ doesn't say either of those two things. You, when you die, you do not cease to exist. You will exist in eternity as well. And the other one is, God's not interested in how good you are. You're not good enough. That the world, the Christian worldview, the biblical worldview is because of what Christ has done for you on the cross, that is what warrants salvation for us Christians. Uh, the Bible is very interestingly written in a way that the modern American has trouble with, which I've been banging this drum for a long time now, is the Bible isn't surprised that some people go to hell. The Bible is actually surprised that anyone gets to go to heaven. Uh, they were aware of their own sinfulness. And it is Christ in his death on the cross that pays the price for our sins that receives this salvation. You know, again, this is in our society today, a thing that is kind of new in our culture that the church has been dealing with. Uh, we've gone through now some political and medical things that have really uh, changed people. And you'll hear this about the things like COVID, or left and right, or Trump, or Biden, or this side, or that side, whatever you fall in, at your business. But they all are trying to say, and you're in the news, how do we convince people of the true facts of the situation when they don't seem to want to believe them or, or embrace them? And it makes me laugh because for 2,000 years, the Christian church has been asking the same questions. How do we get people to uh, embrace the truth of Christ, the Savior, who died on the cross for the sins of the world, who rose from the grave victorious, and where our hope now lies. It's been a, con a, a, a not conflict, a, a, a project we've been doing for 2,000 years. So we're nothing new to this, but our society is really grappling with this right now. And, and I love how Paul here says kind of the, kind of how we do truth. I, I underlined, uh, yet are true, yet n well known, we live, yet not killed, always rejoicing, making many rich, and possessing everything. In a sense, it's our lives and our confession that will determine and show the world truth. I'm not a big arguer on this. I don't know if I can argue anyone into heaven. However, when people see the truth, they see it in the word of God, when they see it in Christ, and they see it in the actions of the Christian and how we live, I think that ultimately will be what shows the world uh, what is true and what is false. May the certainty of Christ is the truth be in your hearts always. Let us pray. 
Dear Lord, watch over us, put your truth into our hearts and help us to live in a way that shows the world that we know the truth and live the truth. Watch over us and keep us safe on this pandemic. In Jesus' name, amen.